Welcome to the Ringer Podcast Network. I'm Liz Kelly. Make sure to subscribe to the Ringer's YouTube channel to watch the newest episode of Slow News Day with Kevin Clark featuring NFL MVP Lamar Jackson. And in anticipation of the NBA's return in late July, NBA Desktop with Jason Concepcion is back to posting weekly episodes. Also up on our YouTube channel are the best clips taken from this week's Bill Simmons podcast, Rewatchables, and Higher Learning with Rachel Lindsay and Van Lathan. You can find all these videos at youtube.com slash The Ringer. Welcome to Bachelor Party. I'm Julia Littman. Tonight, we revisited Ben finding love with Lauren, and then it didn't work out. And I think that was a painful breakup. But hey, she's married. He's engaged. It's all good. And as such, let's move on. I love Ben. I've spent so much time on him. I wish him nothing but the best. I'm sure he'll be back on this podcast again soon. But instead, today, I am joined by Jazzy Collins, former casting producer of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Jazzy, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, What seasons of the show did you work on? So I started on Rachel's season um, and I was there for four seasons after that. So a total of five seasons ending with Hannah's season. Amazing. So you were, you're just been in the thick of it for the last few years. Um, I have to ask, did you find Tyler yourself? I did not find Tyler (laughs) myself. He applied or someone nominated him, one of the two. Um, And then uh, I actually was the first one to call him. So, and then uh, then he was passed along to another casting producer, but I know how much you love Tyler. So (laughs) I really do. He's a great guy. Tyler, hello. We're we're thinking of you and sending you the best. (laughs) Um, I wanted to have you on the show today because um, r- shortly after Matt was announced as The Bachelor, you posted um, a post on your Instagram basically calling out the show. And um, it was an open letter to ABC, ABC's The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. That's what you titled it. And um, I'm just going to read a little bit from it. Is that okay? Yes, go for it. You wrote, I am a casting producer who worked who previously worked on the bachelor and bachelorette series for five seasons during my time at the bachelor and bachelorette. I was the only black person in the casting office from when I was hired for casting the first season of a black bachelorette through the four seasons I worked on afterwards while working on Rachel Lindsay's season of the show. We were called on to have a very diverse cast. It was my first season of the show and I was excited to be an integral part of the show's history. My hope was that having a racially diverse cast of gentlemen would be an important milestone that would continue into the future. That was not the case. After finishing Rachel Lindsay's season on The Bachelorette, it went back to status quo. The cast was predominantly white. The only black women that were picked to be in the running had weaves or chemically straightened hair, were, quote, ethnically ambiguous, close quote, or were not considered if they were, quote, too black, close quote. Women with afros, braids, locks, etc. weren't even given a chance because of the white standards of beauty. Once I developed a voice for myself in the office to speak out on issues, I was hit with many microaggressions, including being called aggressive. I felt alone while walking through the production and post offices, I only saw a total of three black people. Soon after I left the show, I found out only the black cast producer was also no longer with the team. Your show has whitewashed for decades, inside and out. Your head of post production is white. Your casting director is white. Your executive in charge is white. You only cast a token black person, Asian person, or Latinx person to satisfy what you believe to be the needs of the viewers. Many called for a black bachelor for years, but you ignored it. I'm happy to see you've chosen Matt James as your first black bachelor in 25 seasons. It took a pandemic and the Black Lives Matter movement to take a moment and reassess the issues at hand, which I've called on for years. I'm calling on you to select a diverse cast and production team for season 25 of The Bachelor and moving forward. Not only is it important to have a diverse cast reflect what the rest of America looks like, it's important for the production and casting teams to be able to share the same experiences as the cast members. You're expecting a white team to be able to intimately produce people of color on an emotional level that they are truly unable to relate to. A black, Asian, Latinx, and indigenous man or woman should not have to walk on a set for up to eight weeks and stare at a crowd of white faces while they pour their heart out on national TV without also having a diverse understanding team to guide them through the process. Sincerely, Jazzy Collins. That's you. Is it okay that I just read your own words back to you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's totally fine. Uh, here's the thing. I think I people need to read it out loud for them to really digest mm-hmm. everything that I said. Yeah. So it's okay. I'm totally <laughs> fine with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I guess I'm just curious. How did you decide to finally um, put out the statement? Because you uh, haven't worked on the show, I think, for about a year or two, right? Yeah. Yeah. So last. I worked, uh, last time I worked with them was 
early 2019. Um, so it's been about a year and a half now. Um, I wanted to talk about them for basically since I left. Um, but I was terrified. Uh, I worked freelance, you know, I was afraid that people are going to blacklist me for speaking out on issues. And, you know, the whole casting with Matt James triggered me because it felt like they were just doing this because of everything that's happening in the world rather than doing it because it was the right thing to do. And, uh, you know, they had a great option last year with Mike Johnson and they didn't use him, you know, they, but for some reason they're like, Oh, you know, let's, let's do it now, (laughs) you know, now or never. (laughs) (laughs) What has the reaction been like? Uh, overall, it's been really positive. Everyone is coming to me and saying, wow, I had no idea this was happening behind the scenes. Thank you so much. Or, uh, you know, that trash show, it's been, it's been on for years. I knew it was trash. Or <laughs> I was getting um, some people from the production side and casting from other shows saying, I had a very similar experience to you. And I'm so glad that you were able to speak out on this because now I can understand it wasn't just me. I don't feel as alone as I thought I was. Did your perspective change at all once the show released a statement acknowledging their shortcomings? No, (laughs) not at all. (laughs) Um, I was kind of disappointed, actually, in their statement that they released. Um, I was expecting a little bit more because it's fine to acknowledge, yes, you have a problem, but what are you going to actually do to move forward? Are you going to learn? Are you actually going to implement a diverse cast and crew? Or are you just saying this as like a little band-aid so we can move on. Right, right. Yeah, and I and I guess that's something, that's one of the reasons I was so excited to talk to you is because not only do you have this, you know, obviously unique experience, but it it seems like to me that the way to change the show and to bring, and to like drag the um, pretty racist audience along with the show is through casting. And I, yes. and, and I think, and I, I guess I'm curious, like to, to you, now that they have chosen Matt, for good or bad reasons. Like what do you, what is the next step in doing that? I think the next step for them is first start hiring a diverse crew. Um, before we even get to the casting, we need to have someone that's behind the scenes that looks like him. Um, whether it be producers, definitely the casting team, definitely. Cause I, now that I'm gone, there's no other black people on that casting team. Um, it is all white. I think there's one, half a uh, Mexican woman still there, but for the most, it's all white in that office. Um, and then we also, you need uh, people to learn. So whether you're doing anti-racism or unconscious bias seminars um, to actually have everyone sit down, the executive producers all sit down, even Mike Fleiss, sit down and actually have a conversation about why you had this issue for, you know, 20 plus years, you know, you do have an unconscious bias when you see someone come into the room that doesn't look like you, you know, we clearly have an anti, like clearly have a racist problem behind the scenes. So the best way to do that is to start talking and start learning. And where did this behavior come from and how do we move forward from it? Have you, have you been in touch with anyone from production since your post? I have, um, but they were friends of mine. No Mm -hmm. one that's higher up. Um, You know, the people that are I talk to are of color, um, and you know, I'm hearing from behind the scenes that they are starting to scramble to look for some more producers. Um, So that's good. Yeah, that's positive. (laughs) That's positive. Um, But they were also all really in support of what's going on. They were like happy that I spoke out on it, and now they're starting to hopefully start to see change. So yeah. um, Kudos to them. Are you excited about Matt? (sighs) Yes and no. (laughs) I'm excited to see uh, a Black Bachelor. 100%. I definitely will be watching. I'm not excited in the circumstances he was chosen. Right. Right. And and I think that some other um, Bachelor commentators have have felt felt the same way. Obviously, Rachel felt the same way as well. And Mm -hmm. I... I am like an unabashed Matt fan just based on what I saw from his, from Tyler's Instagram and from Matt's Instagram over the last year. So, <laughs> so I'm genuinely excited that like to now see this person on television. Cause I just feel like I, I know him though. I very obviously do not. And have not met him or spoken to him though. I've slid, slid into his DM several times. Um, <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's just like a big, opportunity and even before that with Claire's season I mean one of the one of the things that people have been talking about since the pandemic is that Claire's men were really young 
and that mm-hmm. they didn't seem like they were they were necessarily going to be a good fit for her based on the very little information we had. But Claire, I think, is 39. And so for her to have like a mostly under 30 men didn't really seem like it was giving her like the shot at love that I think the show genuinely does hope comes out of it. Do, do you think that production hopes that a match is found by the end? I, at first, when I first started at working at The Bachelor, I always felt like, yeah, they were absolutely looking for matches for people, but I was looking at a rose colored glasses. Mm-hmm. Uh, now that I'm stepping back from it and like really assessing, it's TV, you know, at the yeah. end of the day. And are they going to produce something that everyone would be interested in watching? Yeah. Um, and because of that, I don't think they care so much about matches anymore. There was a moment where, you know, for Becca's season, I felt like there was a few candidates that she could have actually had a relationship with. Um, but then I went and watched Peter's season. And I was like, <laughs> none of these people I see with this man. <laughs> You know, I felt like a lot of these people were just kind of thrown in because they would make good television rather than these people that will actually be matches for them. Peter season, I feel like is going to go down as like one of the great Bachelor quagmires. I I mean, I guess it was like pretty well rated, but there's like not a single person. Actually, I just met Natasha and she was really delightful. I really enjoyed her. And I Mm -hmm. think that I think that a lot of the women probably are like I, I mean did you work on peter season i didn't peter season was after i left so that was my first season i didn't work on she was like saying that she's friends with like you know a couple of different women from the show and mm-hmm. i i really enjoyed chatting with her and so i like i'm just gonna trust her judgment but no one came off well in that season i mean like yeah liter- literally no one in- including peter and both and and i just think that it was kind of like uh, uh everyone just seemed like way too young and you were just yeah. like very much in it. They were very much in it for the fame. I mean, yeah. I mean, why not? Like being on TV, getting all these Instagram followers. Now you could sell some skinny tea. Like, yeah. why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Jazzy, I have so many questions for you. I guess like, do you enjoy reality TV? Like you're so inside how it gets made. So I, I'm just curious, like what shows you still like and, and how you feel about the genre. I used to despise reality TV because I worked in it. So Uh now, (laughs) but now I'm starting to open myself to it and only watching shows that I am like so far removed from. So I don't look at it with like a, uh, a glass half empty. Um, so now I watch real housewives of Beverly Hills. I'm a fan of that also because they have their first black lead, which is Garcelle. Yeah. I love Um, Garcelle. Love Garcelle. And I watch a lot of HGTV because, (laughs) you know, it's calming. I can keep it on in the background. Uh, but for the most part, I, I, stay away from reality TV because I look at it like, oh, I know exactly how they did X, Y, and Z. Yeah. How did you get into the field? I had every intention of working as like a producer on set rather than working in casting. Um, I was working on the Wendy Williams show. Ooh, gosh, season... I don't even know what it was, like season 10 or something like that or season 8. It was a long time ago. Um, and after that, I uh, was like, okay, I definitely want to work in TV. I just don't know exactly where. So I moved out to LA and I went in for an interview for a production assistant job. And they were like, hey, you know, you would work really well in casting. And I was like, what? And they were <laughs> like, yeah, do you want a casting job? And I was broke. I lived in LA and I had no money. And I was like, okay, this is, this is my shot. So let's do it. And I worked on a game show um, called Let's Ask America, which was all through like Skype. Um, and it was a very interesting game show. Uh, but since then, I've just been hopping from show to show, working in freelance. And I absolutely love it. I love the opportunity to talk to people of all walks of life. Yeah. That most people would never have had the option or ability to talk to these types of people. So I love it. It does seem really fun. I, I personally enjoy talking to strangers. Like I really like like I love going to a party and talking to new people, like not the people I know there. And then, and then kind of like moving on. I mean, like it's great when it turns into like a friendship or a relationship, but I, I particularly like talking to strangers. So I think <laughs> I've always been really interested in casting, but I guess like what makes someone a good casting producer versus a, a set producer? 
um, someone that can stand on their feet for 12 to 14 hours is that alone <laughs> is a set producer. Um, set producers and casting producers are very similar. We are both producing talent. Um, but for someone that works in casting, you also have to have an eye for like, whether or not this person will be able to hold a conversation with a complete stranger, just like yourself. Um, if they can't do that, it's going to be hard for them to be on TV right. or like, you know, uh, depending on the show, let's just say it's, it's a game show a trivia game show. They need to be smart. They need to be quick. They need to know everything about this specific subject. And if they can't do it, you know, they're not right for the show. But for the most part, you know, if you can hold a conversation with a wall, you probably have a good shot of being on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep that in mind. So with Rachel's season, what was like the, you know, I, I guess I have like so many questions because first of all, I, I want to talk about um, what happened with Lee, which, you know, Rachel's also been pretty vocal about recently. But mm -hmm. I also want to know, like, you know, I think Brian got a really bad edit. Like, you know, Rachel will even say this. Like, he just seems he he seems so boring but like they obviously have like a really deep relationship that actually has turned into marriage so like right. wh what did we not see about Brian that mm -hmm. made him a good pick in casting Brian is so genuine so like such a sweet man oh. um <laughs> like like Rachel and them together like and Brian together just makes me like so happy um, because not only is he beautiful to look at, he's also like just so nice on the inside and he's a well speaker. He's thought out. He's, he's had experiences in his past where he was able to grow and become the person he is today. And someone that I feel like for the most part in reality TV, at least for the bachelor, that is just so smart and like, well thought out and like can speak very well they don't want to put as a highlight for the show uh -huh. you know they want someone that's like lee that will talk out of the side of his mouth and cause drama and be the center focus which irritated me to begin with because of the whole situation about him and his racist past but that's a whole nother story but like for the most part for brian like because he was just smart and with it it's boring to watch as a viewer. Yeah, yeah. It's like he's almost too normal. The normals always get get either limited screen time, I find, or like yes. a really boring edit because they're just mm -hmm. like, they're too normal. I mean, it seems like that's also kind of the case with Ari and Lauren. Like they seem like so happy together and she barely spoke. Like all I could, <laughs> no, all I could tell you is that she liked leggings. <laughs> I thought the same thing. I was like, wait a minute. Like when we met Lauren in person, she's just another, just like a sweet, normal girl. Um, and here's the thing at the end of the, the day, you got to throw those normal people in to actually, <laughs> you know, have some sort of connection, but sure. they, I, I, Lauren is a sweetheart too. Like those are the people that you see, make it to the end. And you're like, wait a minute, why? But it's because they're just normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. You you can see that. I mean, also I think after the show very quickly becomes clear who's normal and who is um interested in pursuing a very like in front of the oh, camera yeah. career. Like oh, yeah. it, it's pretty clear that Lauren and Ari are really happy. I was like extremely mean about them and extremely mean about him, which mm -hmm. I which I think he I think he always seemed like a pretty like fine guy, just like super boring as the bachelor. Um yeah. But it's, like, nice when people do end up happy and they find each other. Like, I think a lot of the couples that are together, like, Sean and Catherine, mm -hmm. Molly and Jason, Ari and Lauren, Rachel and Brian, like, they all mm -hmm. seem like nice, normal couples. Des and Chris oh, yeah. are like that, too. Oh, yeah. They're all, like, they're all just normal. Yeah, they're, to they're normies. <laughs> they're total normies. Um, I love it. So how does someone like Lee get cast? And what do you know about his background and his social media when the decision is made to put him on the show? So from what I can disclose is that, you know, he comes in, they doesn't, doesn't interview with us. I didn't, I was not privy to that interview. I was not the one that did that interview. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, if he talks the talk, walks the walk, he is someone that can get through. Um, you know, they also do checks and stuff and make sure everyone is good to go. As you can imagine, all reality shows do a whole bunch of background checks and things yeah. now. Um, but, you know, he slipped through the cracks. And when I was seeing things, like, towards the end, I was like, uh, I don't know about this guy. 
Um, and, you know, then we saw what it was on TV and they just like heightened it. I felt so bad for Rachel. I felt like it was almost an embarrassment for her on her seat. I'm sure she's talked out about this, but like I, if I were her, someone that is the first black lead on the show and then they're talking about race in this manner rather than something that's like could be an actually interesting and thought-provoking conversation I feel like they made a mockery of the whole thing and I like kind of saw it at the corner of my eye from the beginning I was like "Mm, something's not right about him he just doesn't give me that vibes and it's just like as a black person you know when someone has a little bit of racism in them. Um, You could just feel it. The way they look at you, the way they talk with you, it was like something was off, and I felt that with him. Did you meet him in person? Yeah, I've met him in person. When he, we met him, uh, I met him at finals, um, Uh. because I wasn't there for the the production when I first, when he first came into the office. And do you stay working on the current season as it's unfolding, or do you move on to casting the next one? We move on. So you start on The Bachelor, and then once they're literally walking out the limos, you're starting to (laughs) cast for the next season. Gotcha, gotcha. So it must be really strange to see, like, your your premonition or like just like your intuition play out. I mean, obviously, it's it's more than that based on the experience you just explained, but it Mm -hmm. must be weird to see that play out when you kind of expected it. What are what can you do as a casting producer when you see that happening? For the most part, I speak up. Um, at least now when in that past, that was my first season on that show. I didn't yeah. want to rock the boat and I was already really excited because we were casting such a diverse season for her. The yeah. fact that we were having so many black men come through the door and, you know, of all walks of life, all people of color, I was really excited about it. So I was like, yeah, finally, <laughs> you know, we're changing something. But then, you know, when I see someone like Lee walk through the door, I'm like, Ooh, hold on. Yeah, I thought that was frustrating. And then just coupled with the Demario storyline was also just like the Ugh. way that he was portrayed kind of just as like a stereotype, I thought was also. Yeah, very as an angry black man, angry yeah. black man. And it made me and like I sat there during the taping of gosh, it was uh when they all come back together, it's like the final. Like men tell all. Reason. Yes, men tell all. There it is. You're very um, clearly not a fan <laughs> of the show. Just, a, no. just a part of it. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't watch the show anymore. Um, but men tell all. I sat there and watched the whole taping, and he was saying some stuff that was like needed to be said, but it was all edited out. Uh huh. Yeah, it sounds it was like such the, a shame. It sounds like the tell alls um, are the most subject to like actual like authenticity because people watch the show back. This is my hypothesis. People mm-hmm. watch the show back. They stew over their edit for like X number of weeks, like whatever it is, like six or seven weeks. Then they're finally like given the opportunity to say their piece. And mm-hmm. it's always obviously like put together in a way for maximum drama. So, yeah, it's I, I almost I, I have always found the tell all kind of boring, although I like to see what, pe- what people wear. <laughs> the fashion that's yeah. what you're here for <laughs> yeah exactly exactly and i should just you know i am a fan of the show still but i i think yes. it it's like i'm i'm happy they picked matt because i'm excited about him and i also hope there is change going forward i think i'm like probably as an outsider and a fan like more um optimistic about that but i i don't know i mean i think that if things aren't different with claire season it will be mm-hmm. very difficult to keep watching it with the same like Optimism or even just like benefit of the doubt because they've had so much time to recast it. And obviously, you know, they've said that Claire season will be filmed like as a resort and they're all going to be in one place basically. So it'll right. be like, a different kind of season. But I I hope they get her a group of guys that are more similar to Rachel's, not only in diversity, but oh, also in, yeah. in age. Like Rachel's men, lo- including Brian, were like all on the older side and closer to her age. Like I think she was mm-hmm. like 32 and she did it. And I, I kind of harp on this a lot. And like, as like a 34 year old, it probably just sounds like I don't like young people, but I, do, <laughs> I, I do think it makes a big difference. Like you, you mature as you go through life and like, you can't be ready to get married at 26. Right. Right. To a She's 39 what? year old. Yeah. I was about to say Claire's what? 39. That doesn't make any sense that you would put a 25 year old with her. Like, you know what? I was doing the most at 25. Are you kidding? Like, why would I be doing anything? Why would I want to be with a 39 year old? At that oh point? my God. I know. Totally. I, I'm, I'm 34. And I'm like 39. I don't know. Seems kind of old. Um, 
<laughs> Who, who's to say? I don't. I don't know. But I. I do really hope with Claire season, there's already like a a, a clear pivot, and I. I I think they've gotten the memo, but who knows, you know, we, we don't know because when I was there, for example, when I said, why don't we have a black bachelor? Their excuse to me was, well, we need to have the right black bachelor. Mm -hmm. And I said, what does that mean? And they were never able to give me an answer to my face. And now that I'm like sitting back and I'm like, right. Yeah. Okay. So Matt James is right. Is it because he's biracial? Is it because he's more palatable? Or is it because, like, everyone wanted Mike Johnson? Yeah. You know, he seemed like the perfect opportunity. And they could have done it before this whole Black Lives Matter movement. They could have picked that, picked Mike. Yeah. And I'm like, why didn't you? Why wasn't he right for you? But yet Matt is. Yeah. I just, that's a question that I would love to know the answer to. I, and I don't think anyone will want to answer that, right? Like, no. I mean, they, 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 they won't. I'm, I'm sure they won't. And I, I think that, you know, it also pick, you know, there hasn't been a, there was a, a, like a long period between Rachel and Matt and who knows what will happen after that. But I, I do think a lot of it is, is about the audience. And I, I guess I'm curious for you as a casting producer, how much do you think about who you're casting in terms of how they're going to interact and then also who the audience is like for you, for you specifically and what, and how you approach your job. So how I approach my job is if I am sitting on the couch and I'm watching this show and I can't see one person in that cast that I can't relate to, the casting was done wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, whether you're black, you're Asian, you're Latina, um, or you're gay, you're straight, you're transgender. If there is someone that you can't relate to in that cast, that was a bad job done by the casting team. Um, so I always keep that in mind. Um, now moving forward, I am constantly, obviously, always in my life, I've been trying to push diversity in the casting room. Yeah. Um, but the one thing that I'm starting to focus on a little bit more besides just race is people with disabilities, the transgender community, the people that we don't see on television. Like besides like scripted television, you never see anyone that's transgender or non-binary. Why can't we see that on reality TV? Yeah. Because there's just so many people that need to be represented. And this is, I am, I have the, the brains to do that. So I am constantly pushing that behind the scenes as much as I can. Everybody's at home a lot right now, and it's getting hot, so it's a great time to go into the backyard. And, you know, maybe you've got a kiddie pool, maybe you've got a real pool, who knows? But if you need some more furniture to make your backyard or your patio your dream space, think about using Article. They have weather-resistant dining sets, loungers, and sofas, and I think you've heard me rave about Article before. I still feel the same way. Article selection of outdoor furniture makes it easy to create a welcoming patio oasis. I have indoor furniture and I no longer have a backyard, but if I did, I would definitely be checking out Article. I couldn't be happier with the quality, the way it arrived, the easy setup. It's really great. Article combines the curation of a boutique furniture store with the comfort and simplicity of shopping online. Their team of designers focuses on beautifully crafted pieces, quality materials, and durable construction. You'll find plenty of items that have a modern aesthetic of mid-century Scandinavian, industrial, and bohemian designs. And with Article, you save up to 30% over traditional retail prices because they cut out the middleman and sell directly to you. No showrooms, no salespeople, no retail markups. Just go online, check it out. Their fast, affordable shipping is available across the USA and Canada, and it's free on orders over $999. Article is offering you $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. To claim, visit article.com slash bachelor and the discount will be automatically applied at checkout. That's article.com slash bachelor to get $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. I know that you're currently working on The Circle because mm -hmm. I saw it in your Instagram bio. And <laughs> <laughs> um, I really loved The Circle Season 1. One day when I have enough concentration to like just completely lock in, I'm also going to watch The Circle France and The Circle Brazil because they're available. Um, yes. And one thing that I really liked about The Circle was that um, everyone, I think, was introduced to you in a certain way where I think you had certain expectations based on stereotypes for each person. Mm -hmm. And then they all defied them. And I actually yes. think... And that's one of the reasons that show really worked for, I think, for everyone. I think it's kind of like 
it's fascinating that the white guy still won. And I, you know, <laughs> well, that's a whole nother issue. Right? Yeah. We, we, I'd say like, <laughs> we could talk about that another time, but I, I really like the show because it's, I think a lot of, it's about like playing each other and also defining expectations. And I've heard in the Brazilian version, like their people are really competitive. I thought the Americans yes. were like, too nice to each other. I was very. <laughs> I heard the same. I haven't had a chance to watch the Brazil. I've only watched the U.S., but I've heard the same thing. And I was like, "Ooh, maybe I need to watch that." Yeah, more cutthroat. <laughs> yeah, I heard it was really cutthroat. So I plan to watch it. But one thing that's really cool about the circle, and I think Netflix reality in general, mm-hmm. and Netflix unscripted, and one of the reasons I re- I really like it is that it is like kind of tra- it's like kind of navigating the space between network reality TV and like um, H or TLC reality TV. Like, I don't know if you've watched love is blind, but that also, yeah. So what did you think of it? I absolutely loved love is blind. Yeah. (laughs) I was a fan. It had enough trashy television feel to make you like go for it with Barnett. Um, But it was also such an interesting experiment that I was like, Oh, that's cool. I really yeah. like it. <laughs> and it's also like, why are Nick or why are Nick Lachey and Vanessa Lachey on this? Like, why I don't what's understand happening? that. <laughs> the casting for the host did not make any sense to me. I was like, you don't need a couple to do this. Honestly, Super it could weird. be just a voiceover and I would be okay with it. <laughs> my guess is that show changed a lot in post. That's just my hypothesis. But uh, probably. <laughs> also, it seemed like they, they kind of shot over like a pretty long period of time. But I. Yeah. I think Love is Blind and The Circle and even Too Hot to Handle, like those shows all uh, draw you in, which mm-hmm. is it, draw you in with sort of certain expectations and stereotypes based on like the last 20 years of reality TV and then all turn out to be a little bit different. And I think yes. that's, that's why they're really fascinating. And like Dating Around is similar as well. I love, I love, love, love Dating Around. I don't know if you've seen it. I did not. I did not watch it. It's interesting. There's some... um some former bachelor producers work on it and also some Mm -hmm. former Bravo producers. So it has like some of that DNA, but you know, it's like a totally different type of approach to dating than the bachelor. It's about like only about first dates, not about like finding marriage. And, um, it really encourages people to like be it, like it, it harnesses the weird and the quirky of dating. My favorite Uh. episode. Yeah. My favorite episode is season one. And it's about this guy named Leonard who is like 70 and he's he's dating. Yeah. It's great. Jazz, you got to check it out. Oh my gosh. Now I have to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> the episodes are only 25 minutes, but. Ah, uh, palatable. Like yeah, it. exactly. <laughs> but anyway, I just, I just bring all this up because I think that there is like, actually the bachelor is immensely popular, but you know, too hot to handle. I think it's like one of the most popular shows of quarantine. Like if you look at those right. ca- cast members, they have like millions of followers. Like it's Tyler and Hannah level. And they were just on this, on this one show that's now international. So, right. It's kind of, it's interesting. And I guess like in your experience, do you feel like there's a new trajectory in how reality shows are trying to cast? Yes, a hundred percent. Um, you know, walking into, I've, you know, worked on the plenty of shows. I was able to work on an Oprah Winfrey network show. Oh, cool. And that alone, the casting team was 90% black. I have never worked on a show where I had that many people of minorities working next to me. And that was incredible, that alone. But yes, in general, I'm starting to see like a diversity push behind the scenes, which is fantastic for the networks to do that. And I think I'm also seeing like, we don't want the stereotypical, you know, hot blonde anymore. I think uh-huh. people are over it. No one wants to see that. If they want to see that, you know, they can, hate to say it, they can watch The Bachelor. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think shows like, you know, that Netflix and, you know, all these other networks are starting to see like, no one wants to continue to watch the same types of people. And if you're going to, if you want this to be successful, you need to have people that are more underrepresented on television. Yeah. To- yeah. I I do think that's a nice thing about Netflix having these hits that I think it will seep out to other networks as well. Mm -hmm. And I mean, again, like maybe I'm just being optimistic because I cover this stuff and I want it to improve. But I I do think that like when you have success with a show that defies the kind of like the network reality model, then it it hopefully will play out into other venues as well. But, you know, maybe Mm -hmm. I'm just being too optimistic. Well, we'll we'll, we'll find out. But um, (laughs) we'll find out. I'm I'm curious, like from your other seasons of The Bachelor and Bachelorette, like who's who was uh the most different from your experience of them in person to what you saw on television? Uh Crystal. Oh, interesting. Believe it or not. Yeah. Interesting. She, 
she was not like that on tell like at all in person. I remember when she first walked into the office, I I loved it. I loved everything about it. She had this tight pink dress on. She had both her dogs side by side and just walked into the office and I felt like she was Elle Woods. I was, and I was say, like, it sounds like Elle Woods. That's so funny. <laughs> I love, I was like, I love her. She's going to be on TV. Like when I first saw her and when I talked to her, you know, she had such a interesting story. I don't want to air her dirty laundry, obviously, but like, you know, she had a very interesting story about her family and like how she became who she is. And she did not have that crazy voice that she was doing on TV. The, Hi. Yeah. She didn't do that. She the was voice very was weird. Cause that went away. I did not like that. Um, <laughs> she was so like such a nice, genuine person. And I think if you go on her Instagram now, you see that. Yeah. But when you saw her on television, I was like, who in, who is this? <laughs> like what happened to her? Was like, did a producer get to her? Like, I don't under, I still do not to, to this day. Cause I haven't had a conversation with her. Like, what made you change? Because that was not you at all. It's funny because then also on Paradise, she didn't talk that way. Do you watch Paradise? I watched a little bit of it because I like someone was like, oh my gosh, like watch Crystal on Paradise and like, and everyone. And I was like, all right, sure. So I watched <laughs> very tiny bits of it and I was like, oh, you know, even people were saying, what happened to your voice and stuff? And I was yeah. like, that's because that was never her. So I'm like, why, why did she do that? Did she know? Like, she, I don't know. I still don't know to this day and I don't want to assume why she did it, but it's, it's not her. And I'm glad she's back to who she is now. Yeah. Super strange. So did you cast Colton for Becca? Um, I, (laughs) Colton, uh, he was, he came into the office like three times. Um, he was just obsessed with the casting team. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yes. I don't know what it was. Like he came in during one of the, uh, casting other casting producers birthday and he was there. He came in just to like say hi. It's very fascinating dude. Um, but yeah, he was, he was nice. He was one of the other producers that, uh, on the casting team. So I won't take credit for it, but I did have many conversations with him. He is, I think like the most surprising recent bachelor. And when I think about it in like of the last five or so seasons, like, you know, Nick and Ben, they were on the show mm-hmm. makes totally makes sense. Ari seemed like he should have been the bachelor at the time. It was kind of like a, well, yeah, let's just try it out. Maybe a few years <laughs> later. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> In some ways, like Colton, you know, I know he's in the NFL and I know he's like this like blonde who looks like a Ken doll. But like right. if, when you think about it in a vacuum, like he is so much. I, I don't know. There's something about him where I just feel like his energy is different than the usual bachelor, which was evident yeah. by him walking off the set, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess like do people's like aura and energy come through and like how much do you guys talk about that? Um, In general, like for the most part. I have when I feel when I sense someone's like energy or aura when when they're sitting across from me in a room, you know, I usually always expressed something's off or, you know, this person would be great uh, to my head of casting at the time. Um, but that's not something that they usually go that oh, he has the aura of a bachelor. Like that's never been, <laughs> <laughs> never been something that's discussed because I'm never in the room for like when they actually choose The Bachelor. There's yeah. so many people that are a part of that. Like, there's, like, you know, my head of casting. There's the Mike Fleiss. There's ABC. There's just Rob Mills. There's literally, like, a million people that are in that room having that conversation. Yeah. And I was never a part of it. But I never was like, yes, he's The Bachelor based on his aura. Yeah. <laughs> Who did you think Becca was going to pick when you, when that season started? Um, you know, I, when I first met Garrett, I always saw her with Garrett. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so I was like, yes, I was right. Um, he just feels like a nice dad, but now, now everything that's happened with what's going on. um, Yeah. Like, oh, that's a shame. Um, (laughs) I missed that, I guess. I don't know if they're going to make it. We'll see. I guess. I don't know either. Like, I don't see any of them on Instagram or like anything, but I mean, I get it. It's, it's a huge problem. You know, if you're, if you're soon to be husband might be racist. (laughs) And yeah. And if, and if you don't agree, like, you know, exactly. I think that's like, you know, probably the, the, the 
the diff- the more difficult thing to overcome <laughs> for right. many, you know what I mean? Because many, many people find each other and they mm-hmm. agree. But if she doesn't and she wants to, you know, live life with different values, then I don't know how you move forward with that. It's I know. And I love Becca. She, she is, seems delightful. She's so chill. She's so down to earth. Like yeah. she doesn't deserve that. Yeah. I'm sure she doesn't <laughs> want that attention either. Like it just doesn't, that doesn't seem like her style in any way. No, no. Even like after the show was over, you could tell that she just wanted to like go cuddle up and like buy a corgi and that's exactly what she did <laughs> <laughs> she had some oddballs on her season that i really liked i always like the weirdos i'm just like very drawn to them so like yes i, I thought that um john graham like just seemed like he oh, was really john. great yeah then mo john and i i just like when they when people have careers is the other thing that i'm I oh talk, yeah i talk about this a lot but i'm just like i love everyone who has a job it's great i know i know i've worked on uh, you know, a slew of other dating shows, um, one of them being Love Island. And Love Island, they didn't care so much about jobs. But then there's like other shows that I've worked on where they're like, we love, we want to make sure they have a job. But I'm like, oh, that's nice to hear. <laughs> <laughs> How was your Love Island experience? Oh, interesting. Um, it's It's like Bachelor on crack is what Mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. It's just so pretty. Like everyone is so pretty. Um, And it's just insane. The standards that they have in place. Um, It's, it's a shame is all I have to say. Is it like written like this person, like this is what we're looking for. Or is it just like something that's discussed? Like, is there, it's it's never written. They never would write that down. Right. Um, Because you know, people would sue them. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Sure. 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 (laughs) Do you, do you feel like there's like a, you know, obviously you want to push for more representation and and diversity and inclusion on the shows that you work on. Do you feel like there's also like just like a lane in reality TV that should be covered that's not? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, as in general, just in like TV shows, I think there needs to be a show on the inside. I mean, they did it with like little women and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So they have those types of shows where, you know, you're seeing a part of a population that you don't really have access to, but they made them so trashy. And I was like, oh, this is not cool. But like, it's also fun to watch. I would like to see learning more about, you know, people that are trans. I would like to see people with other disabilities. I would like to see um, even some stuff like just, that you would expect day to day with people of color and highlighted in a nicer manner rather than pushing everyone into one box or into one specific stereotype. Yeah. I'm I'm just tired of seeing like the black person on that show and they are the angry person or I'm so like every time I like see like an Asian person on television, I get so excited because they, you never see them, especially on dating shows. Yeah. You never see anyone that's Asian. Yeah. And, and if they are, they're usually half like biracial. Right. And I'm like, come on. Like Like John Graham, I think. Yes. John Graham. Exactly. He's half. And I was like, come on. That was your opportunity to have someone that is actually like full Taiwanese first generation or something. And you know, you were like, no, we want someone that (laughs) is biracial, which, you know, behind the scenes, I've heard the words, we don't want someone fresh off the boat. My goodness. Like that's disgusting. Yeah, of course. I mean, of course. (laughs) yeah, I, I will say I think Peter's season had more Asian women than usual. And it and yes. we remarked on it and it was cool. It was ex- mm-hmm. it was exciting to see. And um, you know, hopefully that will happen more frequently. And I I, I think that there is just like there's so much room for different kinds of people on reality TV. And also like Oh yeah. And and you know, I think when you just find genuine people who are interesting, then it like really comes through. And and I I do think that like dating shows, to your point about having like just more Asian people, can just have mm-hmm. more different kinds of people who are like, yeah. like different sizes and 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 all that as well. Yeah, like um, I actually spoke to ET Canada last week, and um, they asked me like, what else would you like to see on Bachelor besides you know just diversity? And I said I would love to see a curvy woman. Yeah, like what is wrong with them thinking that you have to be a size two or size zero that you can fall in love? Like 
sure, the camera adds 10 pounds, whatever. Like, who cares? <laughs> like, I want to see someone that looks more curvy, like some booty. Like, you know how many times these guys come through the door on dating shows and they're like, I love a girl with a butt. And every single person that came through the door that's a woman that we cast for them, none of them had butts. So right. <laughs> these it's poor true. people. I know. I know. It is. It's extremely uncommon. The, it, it's just uh, the, de- the definition of beauty is, is very narrow. I, do, I really do hope it opens up. I don't know. I'm just choosing to be hopeful. I, I don't know why, but here I am. <laughs> I'm choosing to be hopeful as well, maybe because I'm the person that's constantly yelling behind the scenes. <laughs> it's like, we need to do this. We need to constantly look for people that look like everyone else sitting on this television, you know, sitting on the couch. So Yeah, totally. Totally. Okay. Um, Jazzy, thank you so much for joining me. And, you know, thanks for your Instagram post. I think I think people like me need to he- need to hear about what's actually happening on the show. So I, I really appreciate it and um, hope to talk to you again soon. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. 